too long uh, story of my life. So I'll start when I first uh, got to uh, Princeton in 1947 to uh, uh, study with uh, Hugh Taylor. I uh, had gotten a, uh, an engineering degree from my home country, Belgium, and uh, uh, Taylor had many friends in uh, Belgium. His friends told me that I should go to Princeton and to learn some chemistry from him, and in particular to learn some catalysis, which uh, uh, looked a very promising to you, uh, after the Second World War. Well, I started uh, to work, and uh, uh, after uh, the first year was over and I was ready to go back to Belgium, uh, Hugh Taylor said, cannot go back without a PhD, and I said, I don't want a PhD, I don't need a PhD, I have a job uh, in industry in Belgium, and I'm going. And he said, I'll give you a good fellowship, and I said, now you're not talking. Oh, I'd got my PhD two years later, and uh, uh, I never left the U.S. Well, it's because really I became very much uh, interested in, uh, in catalysis, and I saw the opportunity of doing uh, all sorts of uh, good investigation with the field uh, in, in the United States. Now, uh, when uh, we talk about catalysis, uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, we must uh, understand that uh, this is a field where you bring to bear some uh, aspect of chemistry, uh, or perhaps even uh, uh, physics, uh, or engineering. And uh, in my case, I uh, became, uh, uh, from the very beginning, very much interested in uh, applying uh, uh, kinetics to uh, catalysis. This has been uh, my uh, central focus uh, uh, from the very beginning. Uh, in fact, uh, my uh, uh, first uh, publication, when I was still a, a graduate student, was uh, dealing with uh, the rate, the rate of ethylene hydrogenation uh, on various uh, metallic evaporated things, as reported just a few years earlier by uh, Otto Beck. And uh, Beck uh, had a correlation. If you look at all these rates, they correlate with the uh, uh, lattice distance uh, of the uh, uh, metal. And uh, in uh, uh, that correlation, he could uh, emphasize the uh, so-called geometric aspect of catalysis. Just at uh, uh, that uh, uh, moment that I became very much interested in the work of Beck, uh, Linus Pauling came to uh, Princeton and uh, exposed uh, his uh, very new and uh, not been published uh, at that time. Uh, was published a bit later, is a new theory of uh, the valence of metals. And in particular, how he could extract uh, a uh, percentage debound character uh, for the various metals, including all the catalytic metals that they can use. And uh, I tried uh, to correlate the rates of uh, Otto Beck uh, with the uh, percentage debound character of the metal according to Browning, and that was uh, a, a success. And uh, this led to uh, a uh, letter, actually, in uh, the Journal of the American Chemical Society, in which I uh, tried to explain that uh, it looked like really uh, electronic, uh, an electronic theory of catalysis, but in fact, uh, you could not really separate it from geometric, since uh, Pauling got the electronic factor from the geometry of the metal. And of course, both are always uh, uh, tied uh, together. But uh, the point I wanted to make is that I was very much interested in rates, uh, and uh, uh, that continued uh, after that. Um, after I uh, finished my, my PhD and I, I wanted to go back to Belgium, uh, uh, Professor Taylor said, no, I have a new program 
on combustion. Uh, that is something that uh, I have to uh, uh, work on for the uh, Office of Scientific Research of the Air Force, and I need you. And uh, why don't you stay another couple of years? Uh, this was a very pleasant uh, excursion into uh, kinetics of the uh, uh, gas phase reaction, free radical reactions. And uh, together with uh, uh, Dave Garvin and John McKinley, uh, we uh, explored uh, something that at the time uh, had not uh, been explored, at least in the laboratory. The fact that when you get a, uh, an elementary reaction, the uh, energy that is released uh, as the uh, uh, products appear uh, is not uh, distributed in an equilibrium manner at first. And that, uh, for instance, some of the heat of reaction can appear as vibrational energy of one of the products. And I had read a fascinating account by some uh, uh, physicists uh, interested in, uh, in the high atmosphere, uh, that uh, the uh, spectrum of the night sky uh, showed highly vibrationally excited hypoxyl particles. And uh, they postulated a reaction uh, taking place in the uh, upper stratosphere, the reaction between hydrogen atoms and ozone, to give uh, a OH radical and an oxygen molecule. But they said it is possible that that reaction would explain the spectrum that we, that we observe if we admit that the heat of that reaction can be concentrated uh, into the vibrational uh, mode of motion of the hydroxyl radical. Uh, that was a rather a new uh, uh, proposal, and uh, we decided to go to the laboratory and, uh, and check it. And uh, it indeed turned out to be true uh, in the laboratory as uh, uh, had been postulated to happen in the uh, upper atmosphere. Uh, during those years of research on combustion kinetics, I, I continued to work on uh, kinetics uh, of catalytic reactions, working with uh, collaborators of uh, Taylor, in particular a number of uh, postdocs that he had in his laboratory at that time. With uh, uh, Alessandro Cimino, who was a postdoc from Italy at the time, uh, we uh, looked at the, hydrogen at the hydrogenolysis of ethane uh, on a number of uh, uh, metallic they were efficient hoops and uh, uh, we came up with a kinetic interpretation uh, of the rather bizarre situation that uh, was observed, uh, where depending on the promoter that was introduced in the uh, fischer uh, catalyst, ion catalyst, uh, the uh, order of reaction with respect to both uh, ethane and with respect to hydrogen changed very much, and we tried to put some order uh, in this uh, setup, and uh, uh, this uh, kinetic analysis of the hydrogenolysis reaction with our veins uh, has led uh, later to many, many uh, investigations by others, uh, including the uh, very extensive and uh, seminar work Sinfeld uh, started in the uh, 1960s. The, uh, uh, after, after, after that time, I joined the uh, faculty uh, in uh, Princeton, in the Department of Chemical Engineering, and I uh, came under the, the spell of uh, John Penn, who uh, at that time uh, was uh, in uh, Princeton as the head of a project dealing with, uh, uh, with the fundamentals of jet propulsion. And uh, John Fenn uh, was uh, uh, very much interested in uh, setting up 
a molecular beam, uh, which he finally did uh, with the help of uh, his friend Bob Drake in the Department of Mechanical Engineering in Princeton. And I became uh, very much interested in the kinetics that could be done at the surface of perhaps uh, catalytic material uh, with molecular beams. And uh, we started uh, to do such work. And uh, after uh, a while, and after 14 years of uh, uh, happy uh, life in Princeton, I uh, decided to uh, accept an offer from the University of California at Berkeley, and I moved to Berkeley in 1961. There, I set up uh, uh, a, a, a catalysis laboratory, and uh, uh, in part, part of that lab, was dealing with molecular beams, and the molecular beam setup was uh, set up uh, by, uh, by Bob Maddox, uh, who uh, uh, transferred to uh, Stanford in 64, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, in 65, uh, and uh, set up a, uh, a laboratory at Oxford Surface Science at Stanford in uh, the Department of Chemical Engineering centered on uh, kinetic studies. And after uh, many years of uh, very hard work, uh, this uh, molecular beam work uh, is starting to pay off in uh, the uh, hands of, of, of mathematics. Uh, what uh, I uh, started uh, at, uh, at Stanford with the uh, invaluable help of uh, Good old friend from Princeton days, Jack Benson, uh, was uh, actually a continuation of some work that had been initiated during my Berkeley uh, interlude, and uh, it was based on uh, uh, a problem that uh, I had been first exposed to by uh, John Tarkevich uh, in uh, Princeton, and that was the problem of the effect of metal particle size when look at a supported metal catalyst on the rate of a catalytic reaction. When the particle size uh, goes up, uh, does the rate uh, go up? Does it stay constant? Does it go to the maximum? What is it that's going to happen? Uh, so uh, we uh, uh, started, uh, we actually continued the work that had been uh, started in Berkeley and finished uh, with uh, the help of uh, 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 several other uh, students, uh, we came up with a conclusion that uh, I think was rather unexpected. And certainly I did not expect this to happen, namely that when we uh, looked at various uh, platinum supported catalysts with uh, particle size uh, of a metal of one nanometer and above, that the uh, rate of uh, the reaction that we had uh, chosen to study, the hydrogenation of cyclopropane, propane, uh, varied very, very little. And at the most, when we came to uh, actually a, a massive platinum sample by a factor of two. So this uh, led us to the idea that there, there were uh, reactions uh, that uh, were not uh, sensitive to the surface structure, which undoubtedly uh, uh, changes as we go from very small metal particles to much larger ones. We realized, though, that uh, that uh, it would not be a, a general effect; that there would be reactions that would be structure sensitive, and we uh, set up to look for one, and we found one. Which is a reaction that had been uh, just uh, discovered uh, by uh, Anderson and Avery uh, in Australia. And this is, these are the reactions uh, of neopantane with uh, either isomerization to isopantane or hydrogenolysis uh, to isobutane. That reaction exhibited a, a fair amount of uh, uh, rate uh, differences as platinum particles were drawn on candies similar to the ones that have been used before. Uh, 
as uh, we see, there is always the, the, uh, the emphasis on the rate, what happens to the rate of the catalytic reaction, that is, uh, to the, uh, the uh, kinetics. The uh, reaction itself is used as, as the proof of the catalytic uh, catalyst surface, uh, and uh, to, uh, uh, in particular, to find out about the effect of the structure, the atomic structure of that surface, Uh, we have uh, uh, continued over the years to uh, look for more examples of uh, structure in synthesis and synthesis reactions. The uh, best example uh, of a structure sensitive reaction, which uh, we have been able to find, is uh, the uh, ammonia synthesis. Now, uh, it was almost uh, clear that that reaction would be structure sensitive from all that we knew about it uh, uh, from others when we got started. But the question uh, is, if it is structure sensitive, and it turned out to be, uh, what is really the specific type of structure which is of importance? And uh, uh, thanks to uh, uh, Jim Dumasek, uh, who was working on this uh, for his PhD dissertation with me, and uh, uh, thanks to Henrik Topser, who was uh, working with Jim Domestic at that time, uh, we could actually uh, suggest what this special uh, active center, as uh, Taylor would have said, what is it that was uh, the structure uh, that was uh, the first structure leading to the highest rate of reaction on an ion surface. And we, uh, uh, we uh, obtained that information from Lebauer effect spectroscopy, and we suggested that the type of structure that is found on 111 planes uh, is actually uh, the one that leads to the highest uh, rates of reaction. And uh, uh, those structures were identified uh, on the surface uh, by uh, uh, the magnetic uh, anisotropy of the Lebauer effect. Uh, which uh, uh, has been studied by uh, Jim Domestic and Henry Topshaw. In fact, I think that at, at, the, at the moment uh, we, we have a pretty uh, fair uh, 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 intuition about what reaction will be structure sensitive and those that will not uh, uh, be uh, structure sensitive. However, uh, the uh, way to study uh, uh, these uh, phenomena uh, has changed. And uh, now uh, the uh, direct proof of structure sensitivity or structure insensitivity uh, is achieved uh, by people uh, looking at uh, large single crystals uh, at pressures, uh, reaction pressures that can be uh, up to uh, 20. 50, 100 bar, uh, or can resemble the pressures that are uh, of importance to most catalytic reactions. And uh, this uh, has been made uh, possible uh, by uh, the uh, uh, invention uh, of a kinetic reactor uh, that can uh, measure the rates uh, of uh, reactions of large single crystals. And this system was first built at uh, Berkeley uh, by uh, 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 Dan Kang, uh, who uh, was working with uh, Jane Peterson in chemical engineering in the laboratory of Gabor Sommerjai in the Department of Chemistry. Uh, this uh, machine has been copied in many countries and, uh, uh, by many groups working in surface science. And uh, the work that is accumulating fast uh, is uh, very promising in uh, uh, that it gives us uh, uh, kinetics uh, on well characterized searches uh, from which we can get a lot of information uh, on uh, uh, the uh, elementary steps taking place on defined surface structure. Uh, hence, uh, uh, there is a uh, 
data uh, bank growing rapidly, uh, which uh, will give us in the future uh, the, uh, the capability of designing uh, catalytic uh, systems, catalysts, catalytic reactions uh, from the uh, red constants uh, that uh, can be obtained from this data bank uh, or that can be calculated or estimated just as people do in uh, the case of free radical reactions, uh, combustion reactions, uh, uh, steam cracking reactions that can be uh, practically designed, uh, they can be designed a priori almost by from a free radical data. And this is what where we, 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 hope, we, hope, we hope to get uh, to in, uh, in, a, uh, in a few years. I think it is perhaps uh, of some importance to emphasize uh, kinetics and catalysis. Not that kinetics can do everything, not at all. Uh, but uh, ultimately, uh, catalysis is a kinetic phenomenon. And uh, we can uh, uh, study mechanisms, we can study structures, uh, we can uh, uh, study uh, 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 other phenomena dealing with the reaction, but if we do not, do not measure the rate of the reaction, we do not do catalysis. Uh, it's in fact, perhaps uh, at times we see in catalysis that uh, 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 some groups uh, become perhaps uh, detached from the, uh, from the catalytic end of, of, the, of the enterprise. Uh, and they, they are detached in the sense that uh, they will perhaps uh, produce some very elegant uh, spectroscopic investigations of candies, some very elegant characterizations of the candies. But what's missing is the kinetics, the, uh, the, uh, the kinetic characterization, the probing of the candies by the rate of the reaction itself. Of course, uh, whatever we do in, uh, in, uh, in catalysis, uh, ultimately, uh, we hope, uh, will lead to the discovery of a new catalytic material, new catalytic reactions uh, on an old catalytic material. And uh, that uh, uh, discovery is certainly very, very difficult. It is especially difficult uh, in, in academic uh, climate which uh, uh, is separated from process research, and rightly so. Uh, however, there is always the possibility of this happening, and it has happened uh, in, uh, in the past at uh, regular uh, intervals. In uh, uh, catalysis, as uh, in other fields of knowledge, there may be uh, over preoccupation uh, with proof uh, rather than with discovery. Uh, this is true in mathematics, uh, where uh, perhaps uh, we, we find that the majority of uh, mathematicians are concerned with proof, and uh, relatively few are uh, concerned with discovery in mathematics. Uh, in uh, uh, academic catalysis, I think that uh, it would be quite Clear that uh, that uh, uh, many people are over uh, interested, perhaps in uh, in proof, proof of mechanism, proof of structure, uh, and uh, perhaps not enough interested uh, in uh, in discovery. One uh, 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 program that is of great interest to us at the moment, uh, and. Uh, started this about 10 years ago, is uh, the possibility, and I emphasize the possibility, uh, that the carbides uh, of molybdenum and tungsten uh, may become uh, new catalytic materials for a variety of reactions. And the uh, interest of uh, those new materials, which may, I think they are, uh, emphasize, which may, 
they become uh, of uh, importance uh, practically. Uh, the importance of, of those materials is that they behave, and this we have demonstrated for uh, already half a dozen of uh, reactions, they behave very much like uh, metals of the platinum group. And uh, it has uh, become uh, the case now that uh, we have become over dependent on uh, platinum metal groups for many industrial applications, and in particular many catalytic uh, applications, and we have become uh, dependent on torrent sources of these metals. a real challenge, and it is also a, a scientific challenge to know why uh, this could be done, uh, to uh, replace, to find substitutes for, uh, for these platinum group metals uh, in catalysis. And uh, uh, certainly the uh, proof in this case uh, is uh, the, the, uh, the, the ability of these materials to uh, provide activity and selectivity. interest and that uh, ultimately uh, requires, again, a good uh, 